Okay, right. So, we are discussing aldoses. Okay, so we've now um, got to the aldopentoses, and we're now going to go forward onto the aldohexoses, which are when we've got six carbon atoms. Okay, right, so I'm going to move to drawing this sort of structure, which we agreed um, conveyed the exact same level of information as these structures here, okay? So when you have an alcohol group coming out of the page towards us, that will be put on the right-hand side, and when you've got an alcohol group going away from us into the page, that will be put on the left-hand side. Okay, so... I'm not going to be able to fit in all eight of the um, aldohexoses in here, but I'll draw. Uh, I'll try and draw a few. Okay, right. So, firstly, we can base an aldohexose on D ribose. Well, we can make two from here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is cut this bond here again and stick in another carbon which has an alcohol group and a hydrogen coming off. Okay, and the alcohol group can either be coming out of the page towards us or into the page away from us. We're then going to leave the other three carbons here untouched, so their alcohol groups are going to remain coming out of the page towards us. So we start off with the aldehyde group over here. Now, the first one will be the one where the alcohol group is coming out of the page towards us, okay? So we've um, customary uh, started with the alcohol groups coming out of the page and then gone on to the ones that uh, have it going into the page, so we'll continue that tradition. Okay, so, out of the page first, so this is an HCOH, and in fact, all of these next ones are also coming out of the page, so you'll then have HC, whoops, OH again, HCOH again, so all of them are coming out of the page, all four of these alcohol groups now are coming out of the page towards us, and then right at the bottom you've then got the CH2 OH like that. So that again communicates all of this information again. So let me just, to make everything crystal clear, draw you out the full structure of this. Okay? So, like so. Right, so here's the carbonyl group again. Right, here's our alcohol group over here. The alcohol group here is coming out of the page towards us. Remember, this is um, coming out of the page towards us because it is it was based on D-glyceraldehyde originally, okay? If we based this on L-glyceraldehyde, it would be going into the page away from us. Then this alcohol group is coming out of the page towards us, okay? Then this alcohol group is also coming out of the page towards us. So these are the three that we got from D-ribose. And now this new one is also going to be coming out of the page towards us. So it's going to join the clan. And what is this structure that we've now created? What's well, known as d Allos, okay, so this is called D allos, and of course there is also L allos, where you would fix these three here, but then you'd have the alcohol group on this one here going into the page away from us. Okay, right, so that's one of these uh, aldohexoses that is based on D ribose. Now, of course, there's another one. Okay, so let's draw the other one that's based on D ribose, and then we'll go through the other six that are based on. Firstly, d arabinose d xylose and d lysose. Okay, so, D-ribose then. The other one that's based on D-ribose uh, is known as d altrose Okay, so let's draw this one out. So here is the aldehyde group, and now this alcohol group here, the one that we've just added on, it will go into the page away from us, so it will be the odd one out. Okay, so here we have it now on the left-hand side. And then all the others are going to be on the right-hand side because they're coming out of the page towards us. Okay, so here we go. All three of them are coming out of the page towards us. And then right at the bottom you then have CH2OH. Okay, so this is the structure of d altrose Okay, right. So, uh, again, you can have two isomers of d Altrose. You can have the D isomer, D altrose, and you can also have L altrose. Okay, which is when uh, this alcohol group off this penultimate carbon down here, the fifth one, uh, is going into the page away from us, and therefore will be put on this left hand side rather than the right hand side. Okay, and that will be based long ago on L glyceraldehyde rather than D glyceraldehyde. Okay, and these are all aldohexoses. So we'll now discuss the other six. So, we'll go over the page and we'll draw out the structures 
for um, the two that are going to be based on D arabinose. Okay, right. So, D arabinose then. So, we had, we firstly start off with the aldehyde group, and now the carbon that we just added in, it can either have the alcohol group coming out of the page towards us or going into the page away from us. So, as always, we'll start off with it coming out of the page towards us. Okay, now let's remind ourselves of the structure of D. arabinose. Firstly, we had an alcohol group going into the page away from us. Then we had two alcohol groups coming out of the page towards us. So let's put those in. Okay, so then what you have is an alcohol group going uh, away from us. Okay, so into the page. So that's on the left-hand side. And then the final two are going out of the page. Okay, so here are two coming out of the page. Okay, and then finally you have the CH2OH group. Okay, so this um, hexose is very, very important. This one is one that's actually expressed in cells. Uh, well, made, well, present in cells. Okay, so this is D-glucose. Right, and again, you can have L-glucose, which would be where this alcohol group here is instead of coming out of the page towards us, going into the page away from us, and that would be based on L-glyceraldehyde rather than D-glyceraldehyde. Now, you might say, well, this doesn't look like the structure of glucose I'm used to. Glucose is a ring. But basically, glucose can exist in two forms. It can exist in the linear form and then also the cyclic form, and we'll discuss the cyclic form uh, later. Now, people always say glucose when they generally mean uh, the cyclic form, okay? And they'll draw the cyclic form. Strictly speaking, if you say D-glucose, you mean this structure here. You don't mean the cyclic form. The cyclic form, strictly speaking, should be glucopyranose, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay, so... Um, D-glucose, then, is one of these uh, aldohexoses, which is based on the structure of D-arabinose. Right, so it has an alcohol group coming out of the page towards us, an alcohol group going into the page away from us, an alcohol group coming out of the page, and an alcohol group coming out of the page. Okay, now, let's then talk about the other um, aldohexose based on uh, D-arabinose, and this is another one that is actually present within cells. So the other one is going to be D-maltose. Now, the only difference, then, between D-glucose and D-maltose is this uh, one here, okay? So you'd have the alcohol group going into the page uh, away from us rather than coming out of the page towards us. Okay, so this, then, would be the structure of D-maltose. And again, there are two optical isomers of maltose, um, a D-isomer and an L-isomer. Okay, and that would, uh, they'd vary in whether this alcohol group here was coming out of the page towards us, which is the D-isomer, or going into the page away from us, um, which is the L-isomer. Okay, and again, maltose will uh, often s uh, become cyclic in uh, cells, and we'll discuss that because it actually makes it slightly more complicated. When they become cyclic, it introduces a whole nother uh, op chiral center, basically, and that makes it slightly more complicated. It means that there is then an alpha and a beta isomer as well as the D and L thing to contend with. Okay, so this then, at the moment it's nice and simple. This is D maltose, and you could also make L maltose. So this is the linear form. Right, now let's then move on to the next aldohexoses, the next two aldohexoses, which will be based on our next uh, aldotetrose, which was uh, d -xylose. So d -xylose is here. Okay, so we'll start off again with the one where the new carbon that we've added in has got its alcohol group coming out of the page towards us. Okay, so here it is. And then we need to look at where the alcohol groups were already for d -xylose. So we have the alcohol group coming out, in, out. So out, in, out. Okay, so we have to stick to that. So out, so on this side, in, on the left-hand side, and then out again, because of course we're talking about the d -xylose. Okay, so on the uh, right-hand side here. And then of course we have this CH2OH group right at the bottom. Okay, so what is this uh, next um, aldohexose? 
Well, this is something known as D gallows. Okay, so this is called D gallows, and of course, again, there is L gallows. Um, now, gallows is not a aldohexose that is actually present in cells. D glucose and D malose. Sorry, D glucose and D. Oh dear, did I call that maltose? That is not maltose. Um, sorry. Scratch this completely. I've written D maltose there. This should be D mannose. I do apologize. Maltose is glucose bound to glucose. No, it's a disaccharide. The monosaccharide is D mannose. I do apologize for that. That's a terrible mistake. Right. Write that down and put a very big cross for it, as Dr. Najib would say. I'm sorry about that. Um, so D mannose there. Okay, so this other. Um, sugar here is D-gallose, and D-gallose isn't actually used in cells, but, you know, for a complete discussion of monosaccharides, we need to discuss all of this. So D-glucose and D-mannose and D-ribose are the only ones that we've seen so far that are actually in cells. The glyceraldehyde is also there as well. Uh, D-glyceraldehyde is also present. Many uh, reactions result in the production of that. Okay, right. Uh, so, the next one, the next uh, aldohexose, which is based on D-xylose, is something known as D-idose. Okay, so this then will be exactly the same as D-gallose, except that this alcohol group of this new carbon will be going into the page away from us rather than out of the page towards us, but then the structure after that will be exactly the same. Okay, like so. So this is what's known as D-idose. So, diidos, And we're nearly there now. We only have two more structures to discuss, and then we can move on to the cyclization. Now, uh, we're now going to look at those molecules which are based on d -lysose. And remember, d -lysose obviously has this alcohol group coming out of the page towards us, because it's the D-isomer rather than the L-isomer. Uh, but then these two alcohol groups are going both into the page away from us. Okay, so... Let's look at the two, um, two aldohexoses that are based on d -lysos. So, we start off with the aldehyde group here, and then uh, the first carbon, which is, sorry, the second carbon, which is the new carbon that we've added in, will start off with the alcohol group going out of the page towards us, and then the next two, remember, are coming into the page away from us, okay? Um, so I'll just get the picture back up. So remember, they're going into the page away from us, and then the final one is coming uh, out of the page towards us because we're talking about the D isomer. Okay, so put them on the left-hand side here. So we have two on the left-hand side, like so. And then the next one will be on the right-hand side because we're talking about the D isomer. And then finally, we'll have this CH2OH down here. Now, what is this? Well, this is actually another one that's actually in cells, used in cells. This is the monosaccharide D-galactose. So D-glucose, D-mannose, and D-galactose, the aldohexoses, which are actually within cells. Okay, we've also seen a very important example of an aldopentose, which is uh, ribose, and also we've seen the aldotriose, which is glyceraldehyde, D-glyceraldehyde. Okay, right. Uh, now, one final one, then one final aldohexose, which is another one that isn't in cells, okay, but is important so that the discussion is complete. Okay, so in this case, the alcohol group is going to go into the page away from us, then the next two are going to also go into the page away from us, and then only the final one is going to come out of the page towards us, because of course we're talking about the D isomer and everything that we do. And if you want to talk about the L isomer, all you need to do is switch this alcohol group onto the other side. Okay, so really there are 16 aldo uh, hexoses. We've only drawn 8 because we've done away with having to deal with the DL. But you could draw out another 8, which are all the L isomers. Okay, and this final one is something known as d -talose. Okay, so these are the 8... Um, aldohexoses, and of course they will also have the corresponding L isomers, which are also uh, L, um, aldohexoses. Right, okay, so we've discussed that the three aldohexoses that are actually going to be present uh, within cells are D-glucose, D-mannose, 
and Degalactose here. Okay, now, these might not be the way you are used to seeing D-glucose, D-mannose, and D-galactose shown. So we'll now, uh, in the next video, uh, discuss the cyclization of these uh, monosaccharides.